In this video, we're going to talk about displacement time graph and velocity time graph for a ball that's being thrown up and then it goes to the highest point and then it comes down and back to your hand. And we're going to assume that there's no air resistance for this scenario. And in general, as a reference, because the ball is going upwards initially, so we'll fix going up as positive. Now let's analyze the motion from A to B and to C. Now one thing to take note is at point A, that's the point where the ball leaves the hand. So take note that the hand is no longer in contact with the ball. So there's no upward force acting on the ball. So at point A, when it leaves the hand, the only force that's acting on the ball is only its own weight, W equals to mg. And as you know, g gravitational field strength, the value on Earth is 10 Newton per kg, and it's equivalent to the acceleration due to free fall, which is 10 meter per second square. Now let's talk about the motion of the ball as it goes from A to B. The ball is being thrown up, so the motion is upwards, and we have mentioned that the only force that's acting on the ball right now is the weight, and this weight will be the net force acting on the ball, and it's precisely because the net force is opposite to the direction of the ball's motion, this net force will cause it to slow down to decelerate. So as you go from A to B, you are decreasing speed and until at point B, the highest point, that's where the speed is zero. The ball is momentarily at rest, making a U-turn. And on the B to C, the ball is coming down, the weight is in the direction of the motion of the ball. So this net force will cause it to accelerate and so it will go down faster and faster. And at point C, given the ideal situation where there's no air resistance, the speed of A and C, they will be the same and that will be the maximum speed. Next, let's take a look at how do we draw the velocity time graph. As mentioned at point A, the moment it it leaves your hand, that will be the maximum speed. Another way of thinking is because as you go up, you understand that you will go slower and slower, then obviously at position A, that will be the highest speed. So let's assume it's here, and it will be a constant deceleration because it's under the acceleration due to free fall. So the deceleration will be a constant negative 10 and then this is the point a and this is point b where the speed is zero and then from b to c the speed will increase but because the ball is going downwards which is opposite to what i fix up as positive so now the velocity is negative it doesn't mean that it's slower than zero it means that because of the negative it means that the direction is opposite so it will increase in speed, getting more and more negative means the speed is increasing. And at this point, just before I reach the hand, that will be your point C. So you basically have a constant negative slope. And the gradient, if you understand that gradient stands for your acceleration, the acceleration will be a negative 10 meter per second square. Now let's take a look at displacement time. But before that, we need to understand what is displacement. To visualize better, you can think of displacement as the distance between the ball and the reference point. This reference point is fixed. Let's assume it's at the position A. As the ball goes higher and higher, the displacement between the ball and the reference point is getting bigger and bigger. But as the ball is coming down, the displacement is getting shorter and shorter. The distance between the ball and the reference point is getting shorter and shorter. So now another thing you need to take note about the displacement graph is the gradient, which is rise over run displacement over time that will represent the velocity, the speed of the ball. So let's start from A to B. As you know, as the ball goes up, the speed is decreasing and that's how the shape of the displacement will look like. The gradient will get will be decreasing, it's getting less and less steep, and this is point B where the gradient is zero, so there's no steepness here, and this is point A where the speed is the maximum, so the gradient will be the highest, the velocity will be the highest. Then from point B to point C, as the ball is coming down, its speed is increasing, and the distance, the displacement between the ball and the reference point is getting 
it's going back to its original position so the displacement is getting shorter and shorter so and it's going faster and faster so it's getting steeper and steeper so this point here is point C and that will be the shape of the displacement time graph as for the acceleration time graph it will be good if you look at the velocity time we have learned that the gradient of a velocity time graph will represent the acceleration so if you just strictly look at the gradient it is a negative constant gradient negative constant acceleration so the graph here on the acceleration time will be a constant value that means it will be a horizontal line and the value here will be minus 10 but why is the magnitude 10 because on earth whether you drop a ball or you throw something up and ignoring air resistance the acceleration due to free fall is always 10 meter per second square whether it's positive or negative it depends on where you fix the direction as positive upwards or downwards so since if you strictly look at the velocity time is a negative gradient so the acceleration you will draw it negative as a horizontal line Next, let's cover the speed time and the distance time graph. First of all, you have to take note that these two quantities, they are scalar, so direction is not important. So in other words, there won't be negative portion of the graph. So how will it look like? So the first part, because the ball is going up and it's traveling, it's decelerating at a constant deceleration. So the initial part is the same from A to B, but from B to C, because speed, there's no negative speed so the speed will go faster and faster as it comes down to point C so this is how the speed time curve will look like so for distant time curve now distant is the physical path the, the distance that it moves from A to B plus B to C so the distance will never decrease so it will keep, just keep on increasing so the first part from A to B it will be the same so the speed decreases at point B is momentary at rest then as it continue its journey from B to C it continues to cover a greater distance and the speed is getting faster and faster so the gradient is increasing and this is point C it's different from displacement because displacement basically you just care about your starting point to the ending point and point C is go back to its original position so the starting point and the ending point they are the same there's no displacement between them for the last part let's talk about the area underneath the graph of a velocity time or speed time graph now for example if you throw the ball up let's say this is a maximum height of 2 meter so in relationship if you were to find from the velocity time that will correspond to this area underneath the graph that's the height the maximum height that the ball will reach and so if you come down this distance here obviously the area underneath the graph over here so if that's the case this will correspond to 2 meters and for distance there will be 2 meters and finally at point C it will have traveled a total distance of 4 meters so after this video I hope you will know how to sketch the graphs and also to how to interpret the graphs